Welcome back. Last year, the UND women's basketball team captured their second Big Sky regular season title in the last four years. But the season didn't reach a satisfying conclusion after the Fighting Hawks were knocked out of the conference tournament quarterfinals and then lost in the first round of the WNIT. This year, Travis Brewster's crew is reloaded and looking to take their success one step further in their final year as Big Sky members. They're selfless, but they're competitive. Uh, you know, when you watch them practice and you don't have to yell out to reverse the basketball, you know, they're talking about themselves, they're coaching themselves through situations. Uh, that's, that's encouraging. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is to just help them stay confident in what they're doing. Uh, this team's, uh, they put it in the hole. You know, that's probably one of the things that they're doing a little bit better job of. Now I worry about the defensive side, but they're like, coach, we, we put it in the hole. So, uh, you know, you gotta give them a little credit there. They've worked on that this off season. All right, let's bring Alex Heinert back in to talk UND women's hoops right now. And Alex, this team was great throughout 2016-17 until the final stretch. So what happened to kind of derail UND's NCAA tournament hopes? And how has this team addressed that in the offseason? Well, Kelly, last year UND was great inside at both ends. Your typical physically imposing North Dakota team that led the conference in block shots and was top three in rebounding. However, they really struggled with pressure. They finished ninth out of 12 Big Sky teams in terms of turnover margin, and they really struggled to deal with zone defenses. Those two things really were the key to beating this North Dakota team. Portland State beat this team on the last day of the regular season and in the conference tournament by zoning the Fighting Hawks up, and without any room inside the work, they just couldn't hit the big shot from deep when it mattered. In terms of adjusting from a personnel standpoint, this edition of North Dakota will still look a lot like last year's team with three starters and a number of role players back. They've doubled down in their front court presence. They're gonna be as physical as ever. But while they have not really solved that turnover problem to this point this season, they're still shooting 34% from three. That's a little bit better than they were last season. So if that improves a little bit more, you'd have to assume they'll be in a better spot to beat a zone when it comes up. More than anything, though, you'd hope this team has learned from the disappointment from last year's stretch run and be able to overcome those hurdles should they arise this season. All right. Hey, the season's still young. They have time to improve on that. But let's talk personnel. Two-time All-Big Sky guard Mikaela Dyer has graduated. But as this team was picked to finish second in the Big Sky, clearly there's still a lot of talent coming back. Yeah, correct, Kelly, for short. Uh, Dyer, Leah Zavla, and Sam Roscoe were really important pieces on this team over the last four years. So it'll be a little bit odd not to see them on the floor this season, but this is still a really talented UND roster, and they'll be led by their junior class. Lexi Claybo was a second-team All-Big Sky performer last year. She's picking up right where she left off. She's averaging 18 points and nine boards a game through five contests this season. Fellow junior Fallon Freeji earned a Big Sky honorable mention nod in 2017. She's now in her third year in a starting role, and she's going to be key to this team's success as a great inside-outside option. We know those two will be good, but UND's ceiling will be determined by how effective their backcourt will be. Jill Morton was great off the bench last year, and this year she looks like she's up for taking on more scoring responsibility as a starter. Bailey Strand is back. She's still shooting it great from deep. Chastity Franklin will offer some pace off the bench. And then there's Juco transfer Melissa Daly. She's kind of the wild card in this team. She's stepping right into that Mikaela Dyer role as the team's main perimeter scoring threat. And she's done really well so far. If Daly, who you see right here, if she can stay consistent, this team is going to be really tough to stop offensively. That's something Travis Brewster mentioned. Stopping people on the other end might be an issue, but if Daly can fill it up like she's done so far this season, it's going to be a good year for North Dakota. Hey, I'm sold on Daly after I saw that behind the back pass in the SDSU game. That Got was some skill. That yeah, was impressive. Sure. All right, well, much like the UND men, the women have to navigate a difficult non-conference schedule. So, Alex, talk about a great challenge in the build-up to Big Sky play. Yeah, that's been the big talking point for this team all year. UND played at number 21 Oregon State and then at South Dakota State to open the season. They get UNI at the Betty this weekend. Then they travel to number 9 Baylor next Tuesday. That's three NCAA tournament teams from a year ago, including two perennial national powers. They made it to the Sweet 16 or better in 2017. That's not a bad way to get yourself ready for an always <laughs> difficult Big Sky season. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Alex. No, thanks, Kelly. All right, when we come back, we'll send it up to Grand Forks for another entertaining You Sit feature from the Sin Bin. Stay tuned. <laughs> 